So it's great pleasure uh, to show all the fans of board games in Czech Republic one of my most favorite author, Alexander Pfister from Austria. Am I right? Is it you? Yeah, Is it really you? <laughs> yeah, it's me. Hello, Alex. <laughs> I, I still uh, cannot believe that we are uh, we really meet in person, uh, or not in person, but on Skype. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, if someone don't know, you are the author of one of the best game, I think, the Great Western Trail. <laughs> oh, And... thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And. Um, This year you are going uh, also to Essen with the new game, which is called uh, Blackout Hong Kong. But uh, right. you don't have only these uh, two games, but you already created a lot of, lot of games, quite a few games, with a very good name. And people in Czech Republic uh, know, for example, Mombasa and... Mm -hmm. uh, I always forget the name for the small blue, small blue box with the cards because yeah, that's, I know. Oh my goods or Port, yeah. Ro Port Royal, in, they're both in blue boxes. Yeah, in Czech it's Boží Boží and Port Royal. Uh huh. And uh, quite, I think few weeks ago there uh, there was uh, there was Czech edition of your. Expansion for Port Royal, which is ah. some kind of storytelling or legacy. Yes. Okay. So, uh, can you tell us, you are um, board game designer full time? Uh, I'm. I'm also doing some uh, stock analyst, analyst uh, working as a stock analyst. Yeah, doing some stock research, and uh, but I'm doing now more and more. Uh, game design so yeah almost full time i would say yes mm -hmm. and when it started uh, your design board game designer career i always i always had two hobbies uh, from the beginning on it was uh, actually it was one hobby it was games with money so mm -hmm. i liked all games with money so uh, it was clear For me that I wanted to study business and I wanted to do something with stock, stock exchange and so I always liked this and uh, game design was always my hobby. I, For example Mombasa is a game I, I, I created when I was 12 years old so 30 years away. <laughs> you are joking. You you created no, Mombasa true. when you were 12 yeah, years old. Yeah, it was not this Mombasa like <laughs> the, the way you know it now. But it was an Africa board. Mm -hmm. It had an Africa board and, and there were cities and you were getting influence in these cities and you were you had goods and mm -hmm. you, you made money out of these goods and, you, and these companies or these cities, they... Uh, fight it against each other so mm -hmm. and that was the game when we, i created when i was 12 year old so 12 or 13 years old and after i finished my minds of seven door i think that was my second game mm -hmm. after i finished this one i thought what should i do next and i found my very old uh stuff about this game in Africa mm -hmm. and that was the beginning I thought okay it, I, I really have great memories uh, when I played this game so maybe I bring this more to modern times and I use this uh, uh, card mechanism this new card mechanism uh, I liked the minion at this time but I wanted to uh, not shuffle the cards but choose which card you want, want to play And then I had these three discard piles, and so that was the beginning of Mombasa. Mm -hmm. I uh, I uh, really like uh, in your games that uh, I feel I'm really fan of Euro style games. I mm -hmm. think they are probably most favorite games, but quite often a lot of these games um, use. Already known mechanisms, and there are not many inventions. But uh, the reason why we like your games is that they always bring some fresh mm, mm -hmm. wind into the mechanism, 
uh, mechanics and uh, the feeling from the game is quite new. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is it is your uh, approach or you really go for that or you, yes yeah you yes. always try to make something new in the game yeah uh, so when I start a new game uh, I really start at uh, at the with the core mechanic so maybe just some cards which I draw on paper or something I I try to find a a new mechanic with uh, which gives you some fun and emotion yeah that's the second thing i really want to have in a game i want to have emotion in a game um not just calculations and optimization uh and the person who is bad in mathematics wins the game so i want to have some emotion some interaction some randomness maybe and all this and you you really want to have I, I want that player ha have some fun or have to react on new situations i don't want to to be a long game very luck dependent so it should not be the case that the person who is the luckiest wins the game but yeah i want that yeah that every game feels challenging yeah that you have to make the best out of your hand or yeah find the mm. best solution for the buildings which are out in great western trail something like this mm. it's really uh, it's really interesting your choice of team for example in mombasa you decided to create game about the uh, invasion of europe into <laughs> in, <laughs> into the uh, far east uh, in great western trail it's really untypical um, theme that you are Mm, transporting cows to Kansas, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but all, m most of your games are, let's say, historical. Uh, I, I, I think if I, I have here the list of your games, and I think most of them are some set, uh, somehow set it into history. Uh, is is it your primary goal to make games? No, no. So in Mombasa. Uh, as I said before, it was not that meant that Europe invades in Africa. I did not want to make a game about no, this. Sir, it was it just was... a joke. <laughs> uh -huh, okay. No, <laughs> I, I mean, it, I mean the colonies, you know. Okay. Hmm. No, but but you know, uh, yeah, there was some criticism about the theme in Mombasa, and uh, I always want to stress its trading companies. Mm. who fight against each other. It's not that we fight against the uh, people here in Africa. And it's not a historical simulation because these trading companies never existed. Mm. Okay, so the only thing which is true in this game is uh, the shape of Africa. Mm. Yeah, so it was never meant to be something historical or something like this. And with Great Western Trail, yes, uh, I, I wanted to do I, I, in the first place, I wanted to do a, a game in America, and then uh, I liked the idea of of uh, cattle uh, trading, and uh, I thought what makes sense when you always take the same path. What the, what what could be a good theme for this? And yeah, I, and I found this Great Western Trail and. Oh, yeah, and the publisher, of course, he has the last word on the theme. Uh, they said yes mm. to both themes, Mombasa and Great Western Trail, and that's how it came like this. I'm not. Uh, I'm. I must. Uh, for example, All My Goods does not have have a historical setting. My other game is Broom Service, for example, does not have a is is a fantasy game. Isle of Sky is also does not have any historical settings so i would not say that i i mm. do historical games so you choose uh, whatever you think is appropriate for the game or what theme you like for example yeah. like blackout this year that's correct mm. uh blackout was always about um uh 
power goes out, you don't have any electricity, mm. uh, and the publisher decided my game was not in a specific city, so I did not say Hong Kong. I said blackout somewhere. Did not say <laughs> where it <laughs> goes. <laughs> and no, it's they th th uh, thought that Hong Kong would be nice, I suppose, because of marketing reasons. They think that, yeah, for an Asian game is good. And yeah, they in they also put in some Asian. Uh, signs or letters so it has a little bit of Asian feeling also the persons yeah I, I really like the idea it's again for me quite new the idea that uh, there is a blackout and mm -hmm. uh, the game is not about the gangsters or uh, dark stories but it's about you that you are trying to resurrect the city it's really really great I I'm really looking forward to play your mm -hmm. new game Mm -hmm. It had it. It first had a little bit of a story inside. So why did this blackout happen? But um, the people did not uh, focus that much on on this story. So we dropped it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the thing is that if you really play a Euro game, you are mostly so much into the mechanics and all this stuff that you are not so much interested in the story behind it. Um, I hope to change this with my new game, Maracaibo, which m might be out next year. Mm -hmm. I have there, I will have more story included in the game. Mm. I, I, uh, I found out that uh, in the blackout, you make also solo variant of your game. Mm -hmm. And in some sense, also in the second expansion in uh, Port Trial, you also offer the solo variant. I think the solo games are quite popular last year. Mm -hmm. How was it for you to create these solo variants for the games? It was something Great. huge? Yeah, uh, I, I, I play solo a lot of times, but not for fun or because I... I play I like to play solo that much, but because I test my games uh, mostly with myself, so I, of course I test them with other people too. But before I go to other people and let them uh, try my game, I, I try it by myself, and uh, therefore I really love or enjoy or need a solo variant because otherwise I have to simulate for two or three people and with, when I have a solo variant I can yeah I can play it solo and if this solo variant gives you the same feeling as the normal game that's great so that's why the reason why I really like to put a solo variant into the game and I think also the people like it because they can test it for themselves before teaching it to other people or yeah, if they are, don't find another person to play with, they can try with themselves. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what I try with these solo variants is not so much uh, to be the high score, but I really like, like I did in uh, All My Goods expansion, that you have a, a, a specific goal and you have to meet this and this goal is of course quite difficult to reach and sometimes you make it or sometimes you don't make it uh, but it gives you more uh, yeah of a success you know you have met the goal you you won the game feels I think a little bit better than when you say okay this time I have 110 points and that's three more than last time yeah mm. this brings me to uh, two questions one is more narrow and what is more broader so mm -hmm. let's start with the narrow how it is with you as a player what do you like uh, uh, do you have some uh, board game club or stable group of players you play with do you play in family or not uh, yeah in Vienna there's there are several many players and there's one board game club I also play with uh, they play more ex expert games. I, I like to play with them very much. But we also have now, since I think two years, a uh, regular uh, game designer meeting every week. And we play 
each other's game. For example, Wolfgang Warsch is now also attending this group. And yeah, maybe you know some of his games. They are more, the one won the Kennerspiel des Jahres with Quacksalber from Quedlingburg. I don't know if it is translated already. But yes, there is a good scene in, in Vienna, a uh, scene of game designers which uh, who meet every week. And yeah, I like to play with them. And yeah, I play a little bit with my daughter, but she's nine years old, so old, so that's not a test, so much testing, but mm. more for fun. Mm -hmm. And what kind of games you prefer? Just Euro games or you play some other games? Uh, yeah, I, I like strategy games, Euro games, uh, so everything in this direction. So my sweet spot would be something like 90 minutes, two hours, in this mm -hmm. range, if it is too long, um, it's also okay, but I don't like it that much. Yeah, And somebody was surprised because he said, oh, Great Western Trail is so long, so why, do, why did you do Great Western Trail? But you know, if you play it fast, the last time we played Great Western Trail with the expansion, it took us two hours mm. with three people. So if you play it fast you can also play Mombasa or Great Western Trail mm -hmm. in two hours. Uh, when you mention now the expansion I must tell you you really make an incredible job with the expansion. Mostly I don't like the expansions for the uh, Euro style games because it seems to me that a lot of expansions just bring uh, something which is more complicated uh, to the already complicated game. Uh, it prolongs the time for playing and so on. So, but and uh, when distributor from Czech offer me the print and play version of the expansion to test it, to think about it if it will be published or not, uh, mm -hmm. I said, yeah, sure, I will try because it's one of my most favorite game. But I didn't. We couldn't imagine what you could bring to such a game with the e expansion. And it's wonderful because it's so easy uh, to learn and it changed the game. It doesn't bring uh, something more complicated. It just changed the game in the way that you play it in the new way, new strategies. And it's still same uh, length, same time for the one party and uh, it's like you buy for uh, in the small box second game of great western trail so it was really nice surprise to have such expansion how was thank it you to, very much to, to, play, to uh, design expansion for such a game because it's not uh, so uh, i'm sorry it's mm -hmm. not so often that i speak to the designers who created the uh, expansion for the game most of the people are happy that they create the game and it's their either they last or <laughs> they create something new. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the expand yeah, I'm I'm also very happy with the expansion and uh, the reason for the expansion or yeah I wanted to do an expansion where New York was the end of the Great Western Trail. Because, you know, uh, there was a mistake in the Great Western Trail from the historical uh, point of view, because it, the Great Western Trail did not go to San Francisco, it went to, to New York. And yeah, I did not, I had New York in my prototype, it was changed somehow, I saw it, but did not realize it that there was a mistake now. So, uh, yeah, it happened, but I wanted to do an expansion where this is now corrected so that New York is now the end station of the mm. trail. And that was actually the starting. So I knew what I wanted to have so to change this. And so one thing happens to the other one. And uh, I'm also very happy with the expansion because, yeah, like you said, it does not add too many rules but it has uh, again a lot of variety and offers new strategies. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, 
Mm, the the second question I had before in my mind uh, is how uh, what is the scene board game scene in Austria because you know mm, when you talk uh, with people about board games Germany come to your mind uh, people always talk about America Germany and uh, maybe France because of the style of illustration and so on but if I should be honest. I think I never talked about the scene in Austria, and in fact, I don't know. I mo I know al almost nothing about the board game mm -hmm. scene in Austria. How you how you see it from the inside? Uh, I think it's quite similar to Germany. So, mm -hmm. not so many, but many people here in Austria play. It's not so many like in in, in Germany. I think in Germany. Mm -hmm. Really, many people play board games here in Austria. It's okay. It's fine. It's uh, many people play. They are organized in gaming clubs and uh, all this. I would not say there is anything special in Austria, which is other, which is different to, for example, your gaming scene or so. Mm. So, and I think we have some designers uh, yeah but yeah I think it's it's nothing where I would say that's uh, the specialty of Austria mm. and uh, you are publishing I think the Eggerspiele is the German company is it right yes. so in fact I I think for you the contact with the Germany is like the contacting a company in Austria it's in, in this yeah. sense it's uh, connected connected region or is it not yeah it is it it's 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 a uh, uh, you can speak German with him and, mm -hmm. and so on so that's that's a lot easier yes uh, but Eckertspiele you know is 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 in Hamburg mm -hmm. which is fine the north of Germany so if I would travel by car to Hamburg, I think it would take me 15 hours or something like this. So I'm not sure how how far I could go in 15 hours to east. Mm. Uh, but yes, uh, so it is easier for us in Austria to make business with a German company, Hans im Glück. Schmidtspiele, Alea Ravensburger, they are all German companies. And yeah, uh, that's quite easy to do business with them. And with Eckertspiele, it is uh, the following situation. We have a designer meeting here in, in, in Vienna once a year where several designers come together and show their prototypes to other companies. And yeah, Eckertspiele attends these designer meeting and yeah they saw my game and they took it uh, home to Hamburg mm, I see are you uh, are you planning to go to Essen this year uh, I was thinking about but uh, no not this year mm. and uh, before you were going there as a uh, as a designer to promote your games or you yes. like to yeah so you I don't went, like Essen as it is uh, as a as a visitor? No, it's fine as a visitor yeah. as well. Yes, I was the last year always there as a designer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, it's it, it's fine. It's crowded uh, and so. But I've seen it now several times, so it's not not a must for me anymore. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. but it's 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 nice to meet other people and uh and talking to other designers or publishers i see and uh can we can we uh talk a little bit about the blackout uh can yes. you present the game uh what you will tell us about the game how mm -hmm. what can people expect from this game what is new what is different from your previous games yeah so in Blackout, the story is that there is uh, no ele electricity in Hong Kong anymore and you are just uh, a villager or citizen of Hong Kong and now you 
want to help the people and, and, and for example, repair the train or help the hospital and so on. So you try to reach different or fulfill different goals. Uh, and you have a group of people who help you uh, and you play three of them each round and you have like in Mombasa these three discard stacks mm -hmm. but which is what is now a big difference is you don't take one back to your hand every turn but only if you have uh, four or less hand cards cards in your hand only then you take one back so this means that if you have a weak person who only gives you, for example, one uh, food, yeah, this this hinders you a little bit. It's because you don't you can't pick up a discard pile every time. So it's like a little bit like a deck builder where you want to get rid of your weak persons. And that was not the case, for example, in Mombasa. In Mombasa, you can choose every time what cards to play and pick up a, a discard stack and choose again and so on. Yeah. So that's a big difference. So uh, at the beginning of a turn, you roll three dice and they say, for example, what blue person, uh, what resources blue person give you. So, for example, if the blue die shows a uh, food, then every blue person you play this round, they will bring you food. And a weak person only one, and the good persons two or maybe even three food. But you have some uh, mechanism where you can change the good he brings to you, so it's not uh, so much randomness. Uh, of course, it's when you need food, you will take the food and you play these cards after the dice roll, then you gather the food and you have some specialists, for example, somebody who makes, who, who exchange uh, uh, something for money and so on. And then the next step is you give these resources to new person you want to hire. So every person has uh, his wishes, one wants to have some food and fuel and the other one something different. And if you uh, pay these resources, you get this card on your, on, on your hand. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and you also repair, for example, trains or help the hospital and so on. You, there's medicine also as, as, a, as a resource and you have to pay all this stuff and you get uh, new cards in your hand, better cards in your hand, or you get them victory points. And with every new card, you can uh, place a cube on the board. And if you have, and if you have a district, so if, for example, every every village, every location on the board, uh, they have roads in between. And if you uh, secure the district, so have all the locations around the uh, yeah, around the district, then you get points, and the first player who uh, who is who secures a, a district gets the most points, and the other one gets a little bit less. So there's a race for this, and the next phase in this game would be that you uh, go scouting, which means that you from your hand cards, you make a team and you send this team for scouting. They give you some resources back and one of this team is insured. So this one person goes to the hospital. He is laid aside and he's not now any more member of your team, but you have a doctor in your, in your heart, in your card. So you can play this doctor and get this person get uh, back again. Mm -hmm. So uh, with this scouting mechanism, you can discard uh, certain cards which you don't want to have in your deck anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, when I when I hear uh, w uh, what you are telling about the blackout, and when I went through the rules, uh, yeah. it come to my mind that um, your games have quite a lot of layers. 
for example, in Great Western Trail, if uh, I start to explain what you can, not how to play the game, but what you can do in the game, or when I'm playing the game, it's always like you can do this, and also you can do this, and the layers uh, interact with each other. Um, is it just uh, luck that it happens in your games, or you really love to create uh, various kind of mechanisms which you interconnect into one working piece? Uh, yes, uh, I do this on purpose. Uh, um, yeah, I want to have this whole, I want, I want to give the people interesting decision. Yeah. So, uh, I want that the people think, ah, do I do this or that? Or I want to get this card on the hand, but on the other uh, side, this would be fine too. Or I need some fuel for him, but I don't have the other one yet. So I, I save the fuel for next round and so on. Yes. That's, that's on purpose. Well, this is really fascinating that in, in some games, which I call some kind, like, I don't have exactly the name for them, but sometimes I feel in the, in the games that I'm totally under pressure. There are a lot of options mm -hmm. which you can play, but you don't have time to play everything. But, um, in the Great Western Tray is like that you can play for this track or you can collect the cows and in fact you always do everything but in some games you play more on the track, you collecting the points in the in the stations or uh, you play for the quest or you collect the dangers and so on. So this is what I really like in your games that you... I feel the options and not mm -hmm. the pressure that I cannot do everything and I have to concentrate only on one precious mm -hmm. strategy and if you decide for the wrong strategy you don't have option to make a turn in the middle of mm -hmm. the game and try something which is better and uh, I also think that I have to there is no um, completely direct interaction that you can uh, you can uh, do something bad to your um, opponents mm -hmm. but still there is a lot of interaction in the sense that you should be aware what they are doing what they are planning and it's true that in great western trade you have this um, wood wood uh, building where you collect the money from the woods and if yes. you don't pay attention for someone who is building all their buildings in the woods mm -hmm. and the, so so this is uh, this I really love in your games mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in in blackout Hong Kong um, the interaction is um, almost the same as Great Western Trail maybe a little bit less yeah it's 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 definitely less than for example in Mombasa where you where your companies fight against each other so there's no fighting in black uh, in Hong blackout Hong Kong for example uh, so um, yeah the interaction is is almost as in Great Western Trail mm. or maybe even a little bit less there's competition for cards so you have to watch out other people do he does he want to buy this card maybe I buy it and so on uh, and there's this race for securing districts for example or to scout uh, yeah but it's not that you really can do something against another player I'm not so a big fan of stealing money for example from one specific player or something like this yeah Mm. And um, what's what's interesting on the list of your games, which I have here, is uh, that you your spectrum of game is really wide, from quite easy games, I I wouldn't say simple, but easy games like uh, Isle of Sky or uh, mm -hmm. uh, Port Royal to quite complicated games like Mombasa. Uh, mm -hmm. Where on this scale uh, of complexity is the blackout? Uh, it's Great Western Trail Mombasa-like. Mm. It's and on the high end. 
and it's easier or complicated than these two g older games or uh, on the same I level? I would say it's 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 a it's a little bit easier, and the reason for this is uh, and I heard I already heard many people liking this is that when you start with the game, you have some very uh, concrete goals. So you know, you, you start with two cards in your, in, in your goal area, and they want this, and the other one wants that. And you, so you have an easy start. You know, okay, I, I think it's good if I buy these cards into my hand. So you already, so at the beginning of the game, you, you know what you can do and what might be a good start. So that makes the beginning of the game easier. And then after one, two rounds, you get more possibilities and more, uh, yeah, points or, or yeah, more possibilities what you can do. So I've, for example, in Great Western Trail, you can start at any building. So you have probably in Great Western Trail more possibilities right at the beginning of the game as in then blackout you you know what you know that that's probably good to buy this card mm -hmm. and um uh, if if i um what mm, sorry um what is the reason that you design, for example, Port Royal? It was, it has some some reason why you decided to make uh, such a simple game uh, in compare with other strategy games, or it's like sometimes you really have to do something more simple to get rest as a designer. Uh, actually, I would say when I start with a game. I start with a quite easy game, so I'm I'm focused on the on the core mechanism, and then uh, yeah, I wait how it will turn out. So uh, it's, it's and really sometimes interesting. yeah, sometimes yeah, I, I don't I, I don't plan to make yeah I, I, yeah. I would not say that I, I, I start and then it turns out to be a very easy game, but it's it's man, sometimes I think okay that's enough. It should be like this. It should be easy. It is fun like it is now as a easy Port Royal push your luck game for example. And why add much more if it is fine like this? And yeah, sometimes I want to do a big game and yeah, add some things and add some layers and so on. Yeah. Hmm. So I am uh, wondering how Great Western Trail uh, started. <laughs> yeah, it was the idea of this rondel. Mm -hmm. So where you, where all people place their buildings, that was actually the start of the game. I wanted, and you build there, and the next person builds here, and we all have all these same steps. Uh, using the same path and going around and around and around. So that was the start. And yeah, and when I see that's not, uh, not that won't be a good game for families or kids or something like this, then I add more and more complexity and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the question about Portoella was uh, that I want to point out that what fascinates me is that in this second expansion you created cooperative version of the game which is in fact the same as the competitive version uh, of the game. Uh, you add something, some cards, some story, some goals, but, but the core mechanism, the core rules are completely same. And what's fascinate us is, is that it's working, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and you only have to switch your mind that the reason why you are stopping uh, taking the cards or you are pushing your luck more, uh, the reasons are different. It's mm -hmm. it's really it's really great. Yes, you are right. There is a first expansion, and this first expansion already introduces 
solo play and um, cooperative play. So the second expansion just does the same as the first expansion, but the second expansion adds the story into mm. this game. So you, the goals, uh, they are just they are not only random, but it tells you a story of this. Yeah, yeah, I like mm -hmm. uh, Port Royal very much, and yeah, that's the reason why I design Great Western Trail, such games, but also Port Royal because. You know, I want that people like my games, they have fun with my games, I want to reach different people, and I want to, uh, it makes me happy when I see that people played in the club, and people uh, I know, they like my games, and so on, yeah. That's the reason why I do this, and that's the reason why I make Port Royale, for example, because, yeah, I wa also want that uh, person who don't, who are not so deep in the hobby, who want some lighter games they are so that they can play it as well hmm. so i think we can stop here because it's really nice to hear that i wish you a uh, great su success with all your other games because i me personally i'm looking uh, for every uh, new game you will create i'm oh, looking well, thank you. really forward to play blackout and mm -hmm. hopefully we will meet uh someone some uh, uh yeah someone in the future yeah. <laughs> to talk about the games again so That thank you very much fine. yeah thank you very much for the interview and i hope uh yeah you you will like blackout uh i'm sure uh you will like it i'm not so sure if it will be better than great western trail or mombasa that's yeah That's a personal taste for, uh, but I'm sure that you will like the game. So, and yeah, I wish everybody who listens to it a nice day. And thank you very much for being on your channel. Thank you very much. Bye.